Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Wake up and smell the Ur tree. Please let me know if you can hear me all right. And I'll explain how this is going to go. Hello, Derp. Hello, Zero Jimmy. Hello, Sakamoto, Mushroom, Antos, Yanguruga. Hello to everybody. All right. All right. So the the trailer is going to be three minutes long and it's going to start, I believe, at nine. Uh, it says that it's going to start at 830. But here in the description, it tells us that there will be a 30 minute cooldown prece preceding the start of the trailer. So for the next, you know, 40 minutes, I guess we're going to talk. <laughs> We're going to talk and be excited. We're just going to sit here and wait while uh, I talk about what I think is going to be shown there and what I hope is going to be shown there. <laughs> oh, I am extremely excited. But I'm also scared. I'm also afraid because... Well, first of all, this thing's going to be massive, I think. Uh, I don't think it's reasonable to assume that this DLC could be anything but massive. All signs indicate that it's going to be huge. No, no, it's not. Okay. In vitro, it's not coming December 2025. Shut up. <laughs> be quiet. No, it's not going to come that date. Historically, but it, it's hard to use from software history here because nothing about this DLC has been normal. Um, but historically, from the moment that they give us a release date, to the point that they've released the game. It's typically been about two months. So that's that's how it is. Now they gave us an announcement trailer. Well, they gave us an announcement with a with a JPEG telling us that the game existed. And then um, we got nothing for a year and we were waiting for it for a year and then we got another year. So it's two years of no information basically. <laughs> and then but, but I consider this, if they release the, the, if they show a release date in this trailer, which I expect that they will, I have to assume that they will, then it will be two months from this or three months at most, relatively soon. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. <laughs> two months from here is March. <laughs> in fact, it's exactly March 21st, March 22nd time. And that is not, well, no, sorry. One, one month from now is March. My, my bad. My bad. April, April is where it, where it aligns. Um, one month from now is March. And there's some evidence that it might be in March because March is the re-release of Horizon Forbidden West. <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West is re-releasing on March 21st which is one day away from the release date of Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> so I'd say that's a really big piece of evidence that that's going to be the release date of Elden Ring DLC. <laughs> um, but if they, if they do stick with their release date to release trajectory that they've had before, then it lines up perfectly because that gives us some time in April. My hope is that either they buck the trend and they give it to us like relatively soon, two weeks from now, a week from now. They, they shadow drop it. They say, here's the thing, pre-order it now. It's coming in a week. It's going to be in February. And this gives me um, all, of, all of March to play uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree. And it won't interfere terribly badly with Dragon's Dogma 2 because that's my real concern. I really like Dragon's Dogma. I really want to enjoy Dragon's Dogma 2. But if it drops in a relatively near time span, I'm just I'm going to be like that meme with the guy with the gun that's like crying and he's I was about to shoot the other guy. Like that's going to be me to Dragon's Dogma 2. Because I just don't have a choice. <laughs> I don't have a choice. It's like hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby kind of thing. <laughs> I might try and play and cover both of them, but I just don't see it. I just don't see me having the time. <laughs> having to choose Elden Ring over DLC over Dragon's Dogma 2 is the worst dilemma I've had in a while. I know. I know. All I need is like a month-ish between them, and then everything works. Everything works perfectly. I can make content and play regularly, each one uh, dedicatedly.
uh there's also it would if it if it released relatively soon then it would interfere with final fantasy 7 rebirth which i kind of interested in playing but it's like not interested enough to like it can go in the in the garbage heap if it interferes with <laughs> with shadow of the earth tree i'll play it later i'll play it much later in the year uh you know it doesn't matter that much to me to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in comparison to something like this. Dragon's Dogma will hurt. Final Fantasy will sting. It's not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> I'm just glad Shadow of the Earth Tree didn't come out at the same time as Tears of the Kingdom because I would have... <laughs> I wouldn't have known which one to choose. I'm also glad. I'm also glad. You know, do you think that Shadow of the Earth Tree... Well, first of all, I think it's going to be massive. Let, let, let's let's walk it back a little bit, back to what I was saying before. Uh, I think this is going to be huge. They've been working on this for two years. There's evidence that they started on April on the year that it released, and it released on February. So, like, they started right after <laughs> this came out. And this is a Miyazaki project. He's got people working on a bunch of other games, and he himself is probably working on multiple games at a time. Probably three games he's working on himself. Um, and this is one of them. So I think this is not... I'm going to take the price of this thing as an indication of, of its scale and its quality. If it's not $40, I'm actually going to be disappointed. Uh... I think it's going to be gigantic. Let me read. Ben, thank you for the super chat. I'm hugely dogmatic about dragons, but Shadow of the Earth Tree might have a femboy. <laughs> Why would you pay me to say that? <laughs> Why would you say me to say that? <laughs> uh. So, no, $20 would... No, $20 ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolute disappointment. It's not going to be no 20 bucks. I'm expecting a Monster Hunter-sized DLC expand. They didn't even call it a DLC. They used the word expansion. And those words are often used interchangeably because they are interchangeable. There's no set definition of what exactly constitutes a DLC and what exactly constitutes an expansion. But when people say expansion, they mean something along the lines of a Monster Hunter Iceborne kind of thing. Like something that adds significant amounts to the, to the base game. Cool Crips, thank you for the super chat. Another George R. R. Martin collab. I don't think George R. R. Martin's going to be part of this anymore. George just did the the backstory of the characters. He did he didn't have any control over what direction Miyazaki would take them. There's been there's several interviews about that, so I don't think he's going to have any because he already wrote the character of Mikula back in the day, and it seems like Mikula or Marika or whatever characters that the Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to be about. George R.R. R. Martin has already done his part for those as well, I believe. Brandon Holler, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for all you do, Rhett. You are welcome. Could it be a $70 expansion? I doubt it. Like, it won't, it won't be like that. That's, that's, that'd be crazy. They might as well have made a new game at that point. <laughs> no. If it was thirty dollars, I'd think that's acceptable. But I think we can use price as an indication of, of quality in this situation. We can't always use price as an indication of scale and quality, but I think in this situation it would be appropriate to, to see it that way. Am I the only one who would choose Dragon's Dogma 2 over Elden Ring DLC? I understand why Rada would be being a content creator, but for the average show, no way the DLC is more important than Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, I don't think you understand the average show, <laughs> if you think that. Uh, you know, like, it's not It's not even... Yes, part of my my leaning in Shadow of the Earth Tree's direction is because I am a content creator, and Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to get massive views uh, on the scale that Dragon's Dogma would be lucky to get a fraction of if I made videos for that. So that is the reason why I'm, I'm going to lean in this direction. But I also think that just in general, Dragon's Dogma's original total sales are, you know, minuscule. So there's a, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are excited, but they're not excited the way they are. Elden Ring is a household name. Everybody knows what Elden Ring is. Um, 
they are even if they're not terribly excited for Shadow of the Earth Tree, and they only kind of like Elden Ring, they're going to get Shadow of the Earth Tree and play it, where a lot of people, like, the people that are in this chat may not even know what Dragon's Dogma is. I think that's that's the reality of the situation. Sean, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for all your great videos and hard work. Now on to the hype. Absolutely. I restarted a new character in Elden Ring. Thank you, by the way, August, for the super chat. Uh, in Elden Ring, last night after the news of the DLC, what is your strategy for playing the DLC? Are you going to play, start a new character, or are you going to reuse an existing character? All right. I will, I will tell you. I might make a video on this because it's kind of important. You don't want... Rick, thank you for the super chat. You don't want to start a new character for these DLCs. Typically, how these DLCs work is that they'll be endgame. They'll be further than endgame. They'll be more difficult than... Um, the hardest thing that you've, that you've have done in the base game. So you want a character that has gone through the game and has all of the stuff and has access to any of the areas because accessing the DLC could be weird. Um, it could require you to have access to a particular area. And so if you wanted to get into the DLC right away, you need to have a character or several characters, uh, with different builds <laughs> that have access to all of the areas in the game. Um, so if you want to go through multiple characters, make sure that, you know, you have access to all the things. If you, if you're only going to go through one, at, at least at first, you want to have everything available so that you can get to any place and access the DLC accessing location. I would also probably recommend, okay, so the, le the level that I'm going to play at is the level that I play my, my, I'm at 135, and I and I stick to 135 because it lets me deal with anything in the game um, relatively well, and it's it allows me to duel and PvP with people that are in the 125 range and 115 range, and it also lets me duel and PvP with people that go to 150, and the you know the people that want to PvP and duel will typically stay in those ranges, so it lets me access both of those groups and deal with stuff in the game relatively easily. I think what I'm going to do, because this is what I did in the Dark Souls 3 DLCs, is stay at 135, but also do New Game Plus and go through my DLC run through in New Game Plus 1. That's That's been the sweet spot for me. I don't know if that's going to be good for everybody, but that's, I think, a good place to, to go into it. Are you going to react to lore videos to catch up? Maybe. But depending on how quickly this comes, I might just have to like speed do it myself and, and not make a spectacle of it by streaming it. Uh, I might just have to look at it uh, solo. Chris, I like Dragon's Dogma 2 more than Elden Ring. Hey, hey. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Normalize leveling and playing the game without the PvP mindset. No, I don't want to do that. I mean, what if you if you just play the game? A PV, PvP is part of the game. Some people don't want to engage with that, and you know, more power to them. But I, I like that aspect of it. I'm hoping that that aspect of it returns in a more serious form. To be honest, uh, for example, covenants. I would really like the return of covenants in this DLC. I think that's my number one. Uh, ask if I was going to get what I wanted, what I want is covenants. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Um, I would also like, I understand why they took out solo host invasions. My, my, my ideas on solo host invasions have evolved over, over time, but I would still like an area like they had in Dark Souls three, a area where solo host invasion was possible, like a particularly difficult area. Maybe it's part of the legacy dungeon or a legacy dungeon, depending on how many they have in the DLC. <laughs> um, invasions is organic PVP. It's a part of the game. It's a part of the game you don't have to participate in. But that's, I think, that's the good thing about Elden Ring. There's a lot of parts of it that are essential parts of the game in its design that you don't really have to engage in. I mean, truth be told, you don't even have to engage with fighting bosses. You know, you can you can summon other people 
and have them kill the bosses for you. You know, you just stay back and not even attack it at all. If you didn't want, if you didn't like bosses for some reason, and you only cared about the level design and the exploration, uh, but you didn't necessarily like how bosses functioned, you can summon phantoms or 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 um, spirit ashes if you have a particularly strong one. Although not all of them are strong enough to do this, but but other players certainly, you can summon other players and have them. Um, defeat the boss for you without you having to swing your sword one time. Same thing with the lore. The lore is a crucial part of Elden Ring, but not everybody cares about the lore. Not everybody thinks it's important. Not everybody thinks it's interesting. But they're not going to get rid of the lore on the on the basis that some people don't think it's good. Fuck those people is, is the attitude that Elden Ring has. Uh, Chris, thank you for the super chat. New map or extension of a current one? New map, absolutely. We need a new map. We have to have it. Hanamim, thank you for the super chat. Being tarnished archaeologist, binged tarnished archaeologist. Sorry, binged tarnished archaeologist. He has the best stuff. I will. I will. He always comes highly recommended. Elden Ring lore didn't really pull me in as much as Dark Souls lore for some reason. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know if you guys have have followed my my ramblings since. Elden Ring. But I have been of a mind that maybe we're not able to grasp it because there's not enough information. This DLC is unusual, and all of the DLCs that Dark Souls and Bloodborne have had really do a good job of elaborating the central point of the story. Some people will deny this. Those people are wrong. No, the DLCs do not bring in more questions than answers. That's not true. They always bring more answers than questions, and they elaborate on the most pressing uh, questions very clearly. <laughs> um, and so I'm hoping that that's the case with this. And assuming that this DLC is the size that I'm expecting it to be, assuming it's as enormous, And assuming that the rumors are true that they began working on it in April, the leaks are true that they began working on it on April of the same year that they released it, I am going to assume that this DLC was planned from the, from the get-go. It was planned to be a thing. And that key information was removed from Elden Ring that will help us make sense of what was going on in the base game. Uh, this is copium from me, because I also feel like I didn't understand Elden Ring at the level that I would have liked to. So... <laughs> I would like to think I'm not as stupid as as all that, and that there really is some crucial information that I'm missing that will help me make the metaphorical connections that I that I made in Dark Souls, Dark Souls one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm I believe it's going to be another thirty minutes here. Highlander, your recent find for me, I'm so appreciative of your perspective. Chance of end of this week release, I'm already up to my knees in democracy. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, but I hope so, because that would be an optimal time. My optimal times for this are February, late February, uh, or April. Because I'm very happy playing Helldivers 2 right now, but I will, you know, that, that has a lot of problems. It's very difficult to log in. Okay, yeah, still, still, thirty-minute timer. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to to play Hell Divers too, but you know, it's not going anywhere. There's nothing to spoil in it. So if the if it happens this week for some reason, that's optimal. That's perfectly fine. I'll spend the month before Dragon's Dogma two incessantly playing this thing over and over and making content for it like every day daily videos for a month <laughs> and then um dragon's dogma will come out and that gives me you know another however much time and then i can play and make content for that and then finally um yeah yeah that's optimal I am also interested in Earth Defense Force 6 that comes out sometime in summer. So if possible, I would hope that Elden Ring, if it doesn't come in February and does come in April, stays away from that. If that doesn't have a release date yet.
Do you think we'll see Godwin the Golan as a boss or as a character? I honestly don't know what to expect with this thing. I'm uh, the the weird thing about the DLCs in Dark Souls one, two, and three. It's really never about what you're expecting it to be about, even if it elaborates on the things you wanted to elaborate. Um, no one would have predicted that the Dark Souls two DLC, for example, was or the Dark Souls one DLC was going to bring you to the past before that, um, and then that established a norm of oh, you can go into the past. And so people are always expecting us to go into the past. They see Mikola and they expect, oh, past. That's an option. That's a thing that it could do. It could also be a dream, because Mikola is a dream thing, because he's also Saint Trina. Um, it's, it's not clear to me. They can go anywhere. Miyazaki's brain is more creative than what my speculation can contain. Helios, you're my go-to guy for game recommendations. Thanks, Red. You are welcome. <laughs> I would recommend Helldivers 2 if you haven't played it already, but uh, maybe wait. Anybody in chat, I've been loving Helldivers 2, but maybe wait, because it is rough. <laughs> it uh, There's a good possibility you'll spend a lot of time not being able to get in at the moment. Did you play Lies of P? I I did. I did. I was, I was hesitant. I made a review for it. Did pretty well. Uh, I loved it. I think it's the best non-from-software Souls game. Best Souls-like ever made. Chances of it being bad? Well, it can't be bad. Um, it depends on what you mean by bad. Some people don't even like Elden Ring. You know, the, there's a lot of Demon Souls from software fans, Dark Souls 1 Demon Souls fans, that think Elden Ring is too much of a departure. It's far too much. They don't like the open world. They don't like that. Um, so if you think Elden Ring is bad, then maybe you'll think the the Shadow of the Earth Tree is bad. But I don't, I don't think so. My expectation with this DLC is um, the DLCs expand on the point of the game, in my experience. That's, I think that's what all the DLCs have done. They expand on the best qualities of the game and the point of the game, both metaphorically, story-wise, and gameplay-wise. And I think, gameplay-wise, um, the point of Elden Ring is that it's giant. <laughs> you know, that it's it's really big. The The shared experience that we all had playing Elden Ring is you get a tiny piece, you get your first piece of the map, you grab the first piece of the map, and then you look at your map and you're like, okay, okay, so the world is kind of this big, you know, and then you go and get another piece. Okay, you get it, you get two pieces of the Limgrave map. You get, <laughs> you get the, the one, the east and the west part of, of Limgrave. And you're like, okay, I'm starting to get an idea of how big this is. And then you get Liurnia and you get this whole other biome. And the map expands by a lot when you get that piece. And then you get to the Altus Plateau and you're like, at, th at that point, you're like, how big is this map? And then you get into the Shif um, Shifra, Shifra uh, Village Well. And you go down and you see the stars in the sky and you see that it has a lengthy underground area. And you don't know how big the underground is area is yet because you just got there. Um, and so I expect, given this time that it took to make it, and the fact that that was a central premise of the game's mechanic, the, they keep wowing you with the size of the game. <laughs> um, that the scale will be impressive. That's going to be a thing like, oh, it's a DLC. Surely it'll be big. And you think that and you are expecting big. But then they catch you off guard with just how big it actually is. That's what I'm hoping for. You get caught off guard the way you get caught off guard the first time. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping Um What's your go-to build? What sort of weapons or spells are you looking forward to? I want more intelligence faith weapons and more incantations generally. I'm generally not an intelligence faith person. I am a dex person with katanas. That's who I am. Uh, that's how I <laughs> that's how I do things. However, I'm actually a strength build because I use the Nagakiba two-handed, so it's a strength Nagakiba, <laughs> but it's not really a strength build because <laughs> it's a uh, it's it's still a, it's really just a dex build pretending to be a strength. <laughs> How did you think old hunters expand hammers, home bloodborne's points? Curious to see your perspective. We don't have enough time in the twenty three minutes. Thank you for the super chat, uh, Tom Badil. Is that a reference to Lord of the Rings? I just started reading Lord of the Rings. Tom Bombadil is a character in that. 
But anyway, we don't have enough time for me to even explain what I think the point of Bloodborne is, much less how the DLCs hammered home the point. <laughs> if I ever make a, a video on that, um, I'll, 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 you know, elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the voice cracks? I don't know. <laughs> they happen sometimes. You try talking for 40 minutes straight. <laughs> mm. Rat, would you want Elder Ring DLC just to be the one fuck off dungeon a la Kingsfield 4? I would be cool with it. In Kingsfield 4, they had one gigantic dungeon, and the whole game was was practically one enormous dungeon that weaved back into each other on a scale that no game has ever done. Like, people talk about how Dark Souls 1 did that, and how Demon Souls did that, and how impressive it was, and how they want from software to do that more often. Uh, but Kingsfield 4 did it in, in, a, in a way that was just magical. Incredible. If from software has it in them to do something like that again, I'd be all for it. Syncopated, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for doing these premiere streams. You are welcome. Tosker, you should podcast or something with Lemon from the backlogs. I'll look him up. I'll look him up and see who he is. Do I edit my own videos? Yes, that's why the editing is so shitty. In the past, I gave more effort to my editing, um, but now I, I satisfy with my, myself with just putting things on the screen that vaguely resemble what I'm trying to describe. <laughs> Because uh, it didn't seem to have an impact on view back when I tried hard on it. Do you think we're going to discover more about the Glomite Queen? I absolutely think we're going to discover more about the Glomite Queen. Absolutely. Glomite Queen? Why is EG covered in black flames when he dies? All the mysteries. It'll all be revealed. <laughs> Every single thing. I kind of want this DLC to be a $20 underwhelming package just to see Cyostorm's reaction. Now you listen here. <laughs> as much as I enjoy seeing Cyostorm's reaction in disappointment and suffering, it's not worth <laughs> the game underwhelming me. <laughs> it would be funny, but it would it would it would make me sad too. Do you think this will be the only Elden Ring DLC? I will answer that once I see this trailer. Again, I'm hoping that this is just a gigantic $40 DLC. So, at least $30. Like, he, even that's a little, it's pushing it. It's too low. I need 40 bucks to give him. <laughs> hey, Monster Maze, nice to see you. Not gonna lie, I sure got bamboozled with those additional 30 minutes. I was, <laughs> I was ready to go. No, no, this is the best part. This is the best part. It's the anticipation. We get to talk about what we want to see and then reflect on it. Loved your Dostoevsky frenzied flame vid. Speculations on DLC access point. Well, everybody thinks it's the Moog area because that's where Mikola's corpse is. It seems like Mikola's is going to be a big part of this DLC. I, I could see Moog's battle, boss battle being a requirement and the hand being the entry point.
my big speculation is that we're going to go to space. That's not that wild, to be honest, in a game like Elden Ring. That's actually fairly... I could see that. I could see that easily. Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver, and Blood Omen Remake. I do like those games. I'd like a remaster or something. Uh, the kind of remaster that lets you switch back between the original graphics and the and the remastered graphics. But uh, no, I'm not a remake person. I know a lot of people are. We become a remake society. Everybody seems to love remakes. I it's not me. Bombadil, your Dostoevsky video paired with a companion video you recommend with it literally saved my life. Oh. Well, I'm happy that it, I'm happy you liked it. The thing with the Dostoevsky video, I, I, I spent the first eight minutes describing what I thought the Frenzied Flame represents, because I think all of the things in Dark Souls are metaphorical concepts. They represent a real world thing. Um... And I made the argument that the Frenzied Flame represents the human desire to see life as not worth it, that the suffering of life is not worth it, and that everybody should die. And that's like, that's a historical constant for human existence. Everybody thinks that all the time. <laughs> well, not everybody all the time. But throughout human history, this has been a thought that, that has plagued us. Uh, and I, I think I'm right. But I was like, after after doing the video, and, and it lasted like eight minutes long, it's like, yeah, but people aren't getting it. Like, people aren't feeling the frenzied flame. They need to feel it. They need it in their souls. They need to understand the perspective. Too many games have this, have this as a concept. They elaborate on this as a concept, and the bad guy will be like that. And he's like, oh, everything should die. But they never explain why, really. Um... Okay, this is my problem with, with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. All of the bad guys actually had that same motivation. The, the whole game was, a, was about that premise. They had that motivation, but I don't think they elaborated enough on the suffering that causes you to think that way. And so I was thinking to myself, well, who, what, what story, what thing causes you to think that way the most? And in my opinion, that's Dostoevsky. That's um, the Brothers Karamazov. So I was like, I'm just going to read at them. <laughs> I'm going to read at them for 20 minutes. And uh, and they'll get it by the time I'm done reading at them. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Fabian. Timer is still better than the Alzheimer's <laughs> queue. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Is that a stream or a video? It's my frenzied flame video for um, Elden Ring. I secretly hope this releases right before or right after Horizon just to see the dips freak out. It'll be funny, but it won't be funny because Dragon's Dogma is there too. Like, I'd laugh, but then I'd cry right after. Will Torna fix that issue? Yeah, I've heard about Torna and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I get that. Okay. But I didn't play Torna. It wasn't in the base game. <laughs> uh... You know, I could, I, I'm, I'm critiquing Xenoblade Chronicles 2, not Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and its DLC that people say makes it so much better. Your Final Fantasy video was awesome. Really? Uh, it's, you're like one of the few people that have uh, liked my Final Fantasy VII video. <laughs> because they, it takes like a middle-of-the-road position. I'm not a, oh, I fucking hate Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, kind of person. And I'm also not, Final Fantasy VII Remake is good, and, they and you know, it was not deceptive. Like, I'm not in any of the two camps. I'm kind of in the middle, and I kind of think it's not great. Like, I think, I think Final Fantasy VII Remake is okay-ish. Um, and I'm okay with it being the way it is. Uh, and so, like, I got attacked by every every position there because it's too middle of the road. If I had taken one position or another, um, pro, thank you for the twenty dollars super chat. Thanks a lot. Um, if I had taken any one of the extreme positions, it wouldn't have been as bad. People would have. Uh, 
I would have rallied a, a certain demographic and that would have defended me from the other demographic. But because I was in the, in the neutral route where it was like, yes, I think that I don't think it's a remake <laughs> because it seems like a sequel. Uh, but I don't think that it's damaging the original. That's not a popular position. It's not a popular position. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Hannah Meme, thank you for uh, thank you for the super chat. Have you seen the refuting the frenzied flame video where he uses Nietzsche? Uh, Nietzsche, I think that's how you say it. Nietzsche. I haven't I haven't said that word. I think it's Nietzsche. Nietzsche. As a response to Dostoevsky, I think he based the idea off of your video. Hmm. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. But Nietzsche is a, a Nietzsche. It's Nietzsche? Okay, thank you guys. Uh, Nietzsche, I believe, does... was an admirer of, of Dostoevsky. I think he he knew about Dostoevsky. My, my memory, like it's, I haven't thought about philosophy since I was a teenager, but I believe he was an admirer of Dostoevsky, and much of his stuff was a response to to Dostoevsky. I think. Misty Baby says, philosophy is for nerds. Just study logical fallacies and throw the rest away. I don't think you should study logical fallacies. I don't like, I don't like, first of all, people, the problem I have with logical fallacies is that people will learn about logical fallacies and then they'll use that as a bludgeon to label someone else's argument as a logical fallacy and they often misuse they misunderstand what the logical fallacy actually is, and so they'll attribute it to things that aren't, that don't fit that description. And so they'll dismiss the arguments like, oh no, that's a logical fallacy. I'm not even going to engage that argument because it's a logical fallacy, even though they've actually, it's not a logical fallacy, they've just misused it. They've misused the, um, the thing. Plus, they use it as a way to play, um... I don't think that's how conversation should go. You know, I don't think that's how arguments or conversations or or things in general should go. Uh, people tend to play ping pong with the, um, what's that thing? What's that one thing? The onus, you know, the, the onus of evidence kind of thing. It's like, oh no, you have a responsibility to present your evidence because you're making that claim. It's like, no, no, you have the responsibility to present evidence and they'll play ping pong with with, with the onus. Um, and there actually is a person who has the onus, but it's not always obvious in the middle of a conversation who that is. And you'll have to work through it logically. And like, it doesn't matter who has the onus. Just just talk about it. Just stop, stop being weird. Like this isn't a philosophy class. <laughs> it doesn't matter who has the onus. You guys can talk about it. Um, and, and work through it. <laughs> uh, Tom, thank you for the super chat. Oh, low, I had it backwards. That guy recommended your video and his. Beautiful and poignant. I 100% recommend watching it. Mad Luigi is the channel. I see. You're kind of right, but again, you shouldn't really stop you from studying them. I would just not use them in an argument is, is basically what I'm saying, because there's, you run the risk of looking stupid because you've misused them because everybody misuses them. Even I misuse them a lot of the time. Um, just, just make your case and don't try and sound smart is, is what, is what I think. You don't need to be a smart person. Don't try and you can be right and stupid. <laughs> you can be right and stupid. I am often, <laughs> um, Yeah.
Yeah, burden of proof. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Do you think the DLC will implement any new mechanics? It depends on what you mean on mechanics. I think that the bosses might have more interesting mechanics to them. Uh, maybe there'll be something similar to Moog, hopefully better than than Moog's uh, knee heal and the blood tear that you use to counter it. But if you if you mean like add a whole new mechanic to the game, maybe something on the lines of a new weapon type. I could see them adding a new weapon type or maybe even two. Uh, that, that currently doesn't exist in the game. Something along those lines. Like a... Yeah, yeah. But apart from that, no, I, I don't think there's going to be something that's drastically changing how the game is played. The Game Club, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for all the wonderful content, Retta. Looking forward to the DLC videos you should give. GBF Relink a look if you haven't already. Grand Blue Friend to see Relink. Um, so, I'm not going to do that. Thank you, thank you for your comment, but I'm not going to do that. Because uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink looks awful to me. I look at that shit, and all of my friends apparently play it and, and recommend it. Um, but the one through line that they all say is that it's got a terrible story or a mid story. And some of these people already don't have high standards for stories. Uh, and they're saying that it's, that it's okay-ish or bad. And so, like... I'm not playing a JRPG thing, a sizable JRPG thing that has lots of cutscenes and story-related thing if the story isn't good. Uh, like, I, I don't care that the gameplay is wonderful or what, or, or what have you. I will tolerate bad, bad gameplay, but if I'm having to stare at cutscenes to understand... What's, I need motivation for what's happening. I'm not just a gameplay-only person. I need a, <laughs> I need a real reason to, um, to, to care about what's happening in the, in the game and... I just, I, don't, I can't play games with bad stories or uninteresting stories. It's not my thing, even if the gameplay is, is good. <laughs> play Lost Judgment. I played Judgment. I liked Judgment. I don't think I'm going to play Lost Judgment, though, because um, Monster Hunter doesn't have good stories. Monster Hunter doesn't have a good plot. And it doesn't have a good narrative, but Monster Hunter has good atmosphere and themes. It has a good... It depends on what you're talking about story. I am engrossed in what's happening in Monster Hunter, but not necessarily what's happening in the narrative. <laughs> like, it's... it's, it's, it's it's not, there are things that are happening in the meta commentary that I think is very cool. For example, um, I've always said this, but recently a friend of mine, Jacob, he's a Monster Hunter YouTuber, made a, a video talking about the subtext of Monster Hunter. And I completely agree with him. I think there's a, at least a couple of phrases in his video that he like ripped straight from our conversations talking about it. Um, that's not an accusation. That's just, I just think that's what happened. Um, and it's like, I do, I think the elder dragons are represent, uh, representations of nature. I think that the monsters are representatives of humans dynamic with, with, with nature and their struggle to have supremacy over a hostile world, um, to make themselves more comfortable, to, 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 to leave their mark on things. And I think that's super interesting. Story, like, okay, a lot of people don't think Elden Ring has a good story, but I think it has a fantastic story. You know, a lot of people don't think Earth Defense Force has a good story, but I think it does have a good story. Uh, it's not, but but we're just not using the story, the word story, in the same way. For, for example, like, not every story is told to you so directly and in a God of War style. Like, not everything's God of War... Um, and God of War Ragnarok. They don't need cutscenes showing you everything. Some stories are told more subtly, like this, and other stories that I like. Even if the narrative, like what's 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 happening explicitly 
isn't very good, which I think Monster Hunter's explicit narrative isn't very good, except for maybe four. Sandaki, thank you for the super chat. Between Grand Link, Grand Blue Relink, Helldivers 2, and Dragon's Dogma 2, Shadow of the Earth Tree fell far into my back burner. Uh, this is in my front. This is in the front of the of the pack. But Helldivers 2 is definitely... Like, Helldivers 2 is going to get better. Like, right now is the worst time in the history of Helldivers 2 to play Helldivers 2. I promise that Helldivers 2 is not going anywhere, and it will be much better to play down the line, if only for the reason that they're going to add a bunch of new stuff, new weapons, new content, vehicles, and mechs and stuff, and probably a new faction, and you'll actually be able to play the game. You'll actually be able to boot up your computer or your, or your PlayStation and play it. <laughs> I would really recommend that you, that you wait if you're interested in that one. Thank you for the super chat, A-N-H-7-E. At this point, it's Apple and Origins. You either want cute, handsome anime character fighting shit or a guy with armor slapping big shit. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes I like both in the same game. <laughs> it's not always either. <laughs> Monster Maze says, I feel the same way. I need incentive to move the story along through gameplay if the narrative is as paper thin or falls apart it affects my enjoyment of the gameplay as well i agree <laughs> do i like how helldivers 2 handles its narrative the ceo said that the inspired by p and p rpgs pen and paper rpgs i see um well we'd ha we'll have to go through more of it before we really understand the narrative because like it's just we've just started so it, it depends on how it goes. Uh, but the narrative isn't really what's interesting. It's the premise. Sometimes the premise is interesting, and that's enough. Uh, I don't really need to care about what happens specifically in Helldivers 2, because I care about democracy. Because I care about democracy. I care about spreading the good word of Super Earth across the settled systems. That's what I care about. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what happens. All right, once it starts, you got you guys, once it starts, you know what? I'm just going to turn up the volume a lot and, and keep quiet. I'm not going to say shit. <laughs> Ooh. It's been two years, fellas. Peggy 16. Moog. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. forsaken place blood must spill blood of your fellows they are truly faithful they were never saints they just happened to be on the losing side of a war Truly, Lordship Sanction, in one so bereft of light. Oh. 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 I presume 
from you, too, are keen to know. Just what kind Mikola is doing here. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. In the embrace of restless flame. I can't hear Come what you're saying. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. Yes! The May we meet again. Incantations. Crucible of incantations. Oh, yes! Or, or weapons that do that. Look at this! Who is this? June. Damn, wait. That's good. Wait. That's good. I can work with that. I can work with that shit. June? Oh, I can work with June! June's great! <laughs> I live with June! <laughs> I'm happy to be wrong. I thought it was going to be in two months, but... Who cares? <laughs> this is wonderful. I can live with June. Holy shit. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Okay, did they add it? Did they add it as a as a singular video? We're just okay, we're going to have to we're going to rewatch it. And we're going to rewatch it over and over. Now, why is it in Arabic? We're going to go th frame by frame. Did you see the unarmed combat? I saw the kicks. <laughs> I saw the kicks I did. <laughs> All right. They didn't add the individual trailer. Okay, fine. Fine. Did you see young Renala? I didn't. I didn't. Let's go back. Let's go back. Now, if you see anything, point it out to me. Wait, did it, did it give a price? I don't, I think I may have missed the price. Where, where is it showing the price? Oh, the pre-order is up on Steam. Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. So they have Eldring and then they have the Shadow of the Earth Tree Edition, which is eighty dollars. Do they have the individual It's thirty nine ninety nine. Where are you guys seeing this? Am I am I stupid? Where are you seeing the thirty nine ninety nine? Restart Steam. Oh my god! I can't read. <laughs> Go to the search bar. Okay. Shadow of the Earth Tree. Oh yeah, there it is. Thirty nine ninety nine. That's what I like to see. That's gonna, that's massive. That's huge. Huge. Huge DLC. Gigantic. Gigantic. Thick and meaty. <laughs> that's what we're about to have. <laughs> All right. All right. 
All right, let's go. Let's go back. Let's go back. We're going to just do this like 15 more times. That's why it took two years. Might as well be a sequel. No, no, this is exactly all things are as it should be. This is wonderful. Oh, oh, but this probably means we won't get a second DLC. Most likely. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. He's referring to Mikola here. There is nothing more terrifying. These buildings are new, right? You guys don't recognize the silhouettes of any of these buildings. I don't think I recognize the silhouettes of any of these buildings. It's 60 gigs on the storefront. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It'll be it'll be huge. <laughs> That's actually pretty big, actually. <laughs> yeah, these are all new castles. I don't recognize this. <laughs> that... This a little bit looks like the uh, liturgical village. And here's the trees from... It looks a little bit similar to what the trees look like in the... Uh, yeah, here's a map fragment. Map fragment. So, okay. Huge open new area. New area confirmed, for sure. And at least several buildings. So, I don't know if all three of these are going to be legacy dungeons. Or if they're going to be considered one big dungeon, but they're they're far enough away from each other. This looks like one. This looks like another one. This looks like a third. And this back here looks like it's far enough away that it could be a fourth. Consistent yeah, this kind of looks like consecrated snowfields, doesn't it? It uh, That looked like the liturgical village over there uh, for a bit. Thank you for the super chat. They gave us time to do a second run. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, multiple large dungeons. Maybe not... All of them legacy dungeons. Maybe some of these are legacy. Maybe two of them are legacy, and and the other two are smallish dungeons like Morn's Castle. I could see something like this being Morn Castle size, but we don't know yet. We don't know. It could all be gigantic. We're not sure. <laughs> read the Steam page. That's a good ass point. Let's read the Steam page. Erdtree bonus gesture for the pre-order. All new stories set in the Land of Shadow, imbued with mystery, perilous dungeons, and new enemies, weapons, and equipment. Discover uncharted territories, face formidable adversaries, and revel in the satisfying triumph of victory. Dive into the riveting interplay of characters where drama and intrigue intertwine. That creates an immersive experience to savor and enjoy. Okay, not much there. It's a Dark World version of the whole map. I don't believe that. There's no way it's a Dark World version of the whole map. All right, let's keep going. Are they going to fix this? They're not going to fix anything. I promise they're not going to change anything for the base game. Well, I mean, they might, but not anything huge. They're not going to fix the snow area. What is this? Little, uh, little figure up here. See this guy? Looks like a giant with a cape. I know it's not. <laughs> uh, it's just probably a tower, but it kind of looks like a giant with a cape. <laughs> Okay, so there's way more buildings than I thought. So, B 
big ass tower here. The sap is being is falling here, and the sky looks weird. It looks like a canopy. It looks like a the cloth that you put on a bed to cover it. The whole area looks like the, the a bed chamber. Some of the buildings look like they have muck. Maybe maybe the Godwin's stuff is here. Mm. Alright, what am I looking at here? A closer point of view of the same tower. Sky burns. New weapon, new armor, new guy. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. In that forsaken place, that's the rune of the unborn. I see. Okay. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. You guys think this is young Renala? This looks like concept art. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, Death Blight Swamp. This is not a. This is not your normal swamp. This is some Death Blight shit. That. Looks like a finger creeper hand thing in the ground. You see that? Like two hands next to each other. Who is this? I don't know why, but this guy looks like Market. I know it's not Margaret because it's a human. Uh, <laughs> this looks like fucking Morgoth. It could be Morgoth <laughs> in human form. <laughs> She's pregnant. He, she does have her hand on her stomach. of your fellows. Okay, let's let's listen to what he says specifically. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. They are truly faithful. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. It looks be- this- this is a legacy dungeon. And this looks very far apart from the other things. Like, this is- this looks huge. This looks like you'll have to go through a lot. A lot of stuff to go up and climb up here and go through this whole area and finally get up here. It looks gorgeous. And then, like, the stones are kind of going upwards, so gravity stuff might be happening here. They were never saints. They just happen to be on the losing side of a war. What am I looking at here? They just happen to be a losing side of the war. She's probably talking about the fire giants. Moon. Mm. 
what is this? What the fuck? Omen horns. This is omen horns. And that barefoot... <laughs> We gotta go analyze Margit's feet. We need to go analyze Margit's feet and see if that's Margit's foot. Because <laughs> he's barefoot in a... Uh, like, you, this, you guys are Miyazaki fans. You guys have to know if that's Margit's foot or not. <laughs> it's a very Margit-like step. <laughs> and then that's that thing. And he's got human teeth underneath his his thing. This definitely is omen horns. And he looks like he's... Like, look at this. This is a human leg. This is a human butt. So maybe m grafting? Maybe some grafting's going on. Reda, do you think uh, that the priest doing Sekiro-esque martial arts is an enemy or a player character around 30? I think it's an Ash of War. I think it's an Ash of War. Yeah, that's what I think that is. Death Blight. Death Blight. That's interesting. But Lightning also. Lightning also. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That could be Godfrey the Golden. That could be Godfrey the Golden. Omen horns. Okay. Number one, omen horns like his brothers. Death blight. And and uh, also lightning. <laughs> not death blight. No, that's death blight. That's not just wind. That's got to be wind. Maybe that is wind. Let me look at that again. Now, the wind wouldn't look like that when he's sucking it in. Now, that... Death Blight. I'm, I'm sticking to it. Then Lightning. Mother, wouldst thou truly Lordship sanction? Mother. In one so bereft. Is that Mikula? Boys, is that is that Mikola? Ship sanction. No, no, not not young Reichard. No, no way. Maybe young Reichard. That would if this is young Reichard, that's the past. That's the past. You think he's talking about the formless mother? He could be talking about the formless mother. He has snakes. He's got fire. What is this? What is this? This he's holding here. Ah, uh, look at the sword. What, what, what about the sword? <laughs> Use your words. <laughs> He's holding Serpent Hunter. Serpent Hunter doesn't look like this. That's not Serpent Hunter. Hang on. That doesn't look anything like Serpent Hunter. Let me look at this. This is Serpent Hunter. Hmm, okay, okay, okay. No, that's bullshit. Doesn't look anything like Serpent Hunter. Blasphemous without the snake. Yeah, okay, that I could see. I could see something like that. Okay. Okay, Rykard. He's got a little thingy. Let me watch until the end of this because there could this could still be Mikola. But but that that is some good evidence for Rykard. Snakes, fire. Anyone so What's on this helmet? A little dragon? Ship they already revealed his name? Where? Mesmer the Impaler, according to the Collector's Edition. Where are you guys getting this information? Is it on the website?
Bandai Namco Twitter. Let's go to the Twitter. Bandai Namco US. It says, in the land of shadow, Mikolo awaits return of his promised lord. This doesn't say shit. You lied to me. <laughs> All right. Well, I I think this is Mikola. No. No, this is Mikola. Bandai Namco just said Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord. This guy looks like he's sitting here waiting. This is Mikola somehow. Mikola. No. I got it. No. This guy evokes Gwendolyn from Dark Souls 1. He's got the snake things that Gwendolyn has. Mikola also, also was always meant to evoke Gwendolyn. This is not... No. This is Mikola. I'm calling it right now. He might be called Menser or whatever, but that's that's what he is. They always gave him pseudo names, like Margit and Morgoth. You're off the name is... It could say that. He, his name could be Menser, but I'm telling you right now, that is Mikola. 100%. No, I'm not. All right, let's go look at the collector's edition. Fine, let's go look at the collector's edition of Elden Ring. But it can say Menser all it wants. I'm I'm sticking to what I I said. I think that's Mikola. The snakes are more evidence, not less. Collector's edition. Look at the hand. What am I looking at in the hand? It's Moke and Mikola's kid. Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this in, in a video later. I'll, I'll, I'll look at all of the all of the things. Let's keep going. So hmm. So that's is this is why you wanted me to look at the hand, the right card? No, no, they wouldn't put right card. Or Reichard's... No. Red hair. Red hair. Like Radagon. This is not... This is Mikola. <laughs> no, you know what? Hang on. Let's, let's keep going. Breath of light. Whoa! The breath of light. Mikola has golden hair. Mikola has whatever fucking hair. <laughs> Marika has golden hair. And then she transforms into Radagon and has red hair. It's not evidence of shit. <laughs> Bandai Namco website. Ooh, let's go to that. Uh, yeah, I'm on the website. Doesn't say shit about the DLC. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop listening to you. We'll, we'll, I'll look at all of the stuff independently later. <laughs> you guys mislead me. Bum, bum. Bum. That's very cool. Bro, let me get to the end of the uh, the end of the trailer's coming. We've got until June <laughs> to get to the end of the trailer. <laughs> let me sit here and fucking look at things. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna go through it again anyway. These don't look like normal throwing daggers. Do they always look like that? 
That's not that's not how the item throwing dagger works. I think that's a a weapon art or a distinct weapon. Butterflies, butterflies. That's cool as shit. <laughs> I presume you, too, are keen to know. I want this armor. <laughs> Just That's a bear. Yeah, that's like a dragon invocation, but it's for the bear. <laughs> And the bear has red hair. <laughs> Just one. Yeah, that's a red-haired uh, bear thing. That's cool as shit. Ooh, let's look at that. Again. Just what kind Nicola is doing. It's a red herring. Shut up. Boar. Like. Porcupine. Incantation. Thing. Whoa. This is a mimic tier thing that has done a bunch of things all at once. This is a fucking mimic tier thing that's got a horse and a troll body and the fucking thing the weapon from the uh from bloodborne the thingy that's that's just the fucking umbilical cord that's the fucking thing from from <laughs> that's probably leonard that's a that's either radon's desiccated body or just a random troll body and then that's just the the Orphan of Kaos's weapon, yes. Looks exactly like that. That's not even, they're not even trying to hide it. Looks like the exact same model. That's probably a weapon. Those stripped of the great face of gold shall all meet death. Mesmer's flame. Come This is a unique weapon. It's the shield thing that's also a spear, twin blade. Of gold shall all meet death. He is cool. Ah, oh, I like him already. Mesmer's Flame doesn't necessarily mean it isn't right card. Come now. Touch the withered arm. And travel to the realm of shadow. That's uh, the girl talking to you. And travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. So, this is probably not an incantation. This might be a weapon art for this specific weapon, because he's still holding the, the damn thing. May we meet again. Oh my god. Mesmer equals Reichardt plus Tanith, 100%. So you think she had a kid? That's Reichardt's son. That's interesting. That is Mikola. Yes, that's probably Mikola. There's some small chance that that's also that could be that this is a red herring and this isn't Mikola and maybe Godwin the Golden or Merica, but I. 
we'll go with Mikula for now is most likely. Godwin, Marika, or Mikula. Those are the only options, and Mikula is the most likely. But the fact that they're being weird about it here and doing this magic, it could be, it could be not Mikula. The problem is, with the problem with him being Rikard's and Tanith's son, is that over here Bandai Namco has just said that um, Mikula awaits the return of his promised lord, and this guy just said in his in his quote a little while ago here, where he was like, "Mother, is this really the guy that you want to give lordship to?" So he could be talking about the mother of truth and not necessarily Marika, but Marika is Mar is Mikula's mother. That was Melania voice at the end. Also, that guy looks like Drake Knight armor set. That's true. You really think that's Melania? Let's go look at those. Let's look a look at that. Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. You think that's Melania? That's not Melina? I'm assuming that's Melina. That's speaking. He has Dragon Eyes, Red Atosca, that you get from spells. Let's go look at that again. I do think you're right. He does have Dragon Eyes. Leave Lordship Sanction in one soul. He do have Dragon Eyes. He's got a Dragon Helmet. He does look like the Drake Knights. He do look like the Drake Knights. Rest of light. All right, let's go look at the European Elden Ring website. Okay, EU, EU. Anything new here? Trailers up on from software's channel. Okay, we'll go. We'll go to that next and watch it again. Pre-order and get a bonus gesture. Is he hugging a pot? Is he doing a little? Oh no, he's doing a ring. He's doing a little ring to the side. Must be region locked. That's not what mine looked like in the EU. Well, that sucks. Okay. What is this? Let me in. <laughs> All right, let's go to FromSoft's website. Let's go, let's go again. Pure and radiant. He where is the collector's edition? Where is this, where is this collector's edition you guys keep talking about?
Okay, see the Bandai Namco thing. Here it is, Bandai Namco store. Just finished the trailer. I finished the trailer. We finished the trailer several times. Collector's edition. Oh. <laughs> the stream. <laughs> Fine. What are you trying to show me? This? Statue of Messer the Impaler. We already know his name's Mesmer the Impaler. <laughs> it says right here in the... Well, I guess I, I guess that could have meant anybody. Fine. Yeah, he's Mesmer the Impaler. I don't think that means that he's not also... Mikola or Rikard, like that's that's up in the air. I think a lot of characters are called two things, and a lot of characters transform and are called different things when they transform, like Merica and Radagon, or Margit hiding his identity as Morgoth. I'm annoying as hell. You're annoying as hell. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Ooh, wait, what's this? What's this symbol? I don't think I recognize that symbol. Does anybody know what this symbol is? Here it is. Here it is again. Fire, and there's this bound ring thing. Exodus, thank you for the super chat. Y'all goofy, even he is mesmer. He could just be a duality situation. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Then you have the snakes here as part of the box cover art. And then a snake wound around his spear. Voice at the end is 100% Mikula. At the very end? Not Melina, you think? I'm not, I don't think that this is some time traveling situation. I know a lot of people are going to assume that what we're seeing here is time travel. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that what we're seeing is time travel because these areas don't look like any of the areas we've seen so far. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. No, we have to. We can't watch this version. There's no. There's no subtitles of any kind. Who was that voice in the start? I don't know. I don't think we've heard that voice before. The blog post. Ooh. Okay. What blog post? You guys are going to need to start sending me links or something. <laughs> In the description. Sounds like you're, uh, you're right. You're right. That does sound... Yep. Yep. Who was your again? He, he's the guy that has the Nagakiba. He's the samurai guy.
Elder Ring Shadow, the user tree takes players beyond the lands between to explode the realm of shadow. We've already read that. That's on the Steam page. All right. This is a very pretty area. Like, this is very nice looking. A long time ago, when Elden Ring was new, and we were all just talking and speculating, and probably no one had gone through the whole, like, body of existing lore yet, um, Vati made a video, and in it he described the Earth Tree as a parasite um, that came on, and, and, and I don't remember exactly what, what his theory was, but Vati made a video where it was parasitic in nature. And now... At the time, I didn't agree with him. I, I Maybe my views have changed. I'm not exactly sure. But this is a parasite tree that seems to be gripping, given the earth tree that good old grip. These are two different trees. And one of these trees is a parasite tree coiled around the earth tree, squeezing the sap out of it um, and, and killing it. That's a, that's a thing that happens in real trees. Uh, Neo, thank you for the super chat. Yura, Sean Dooley's voice, even his normal one, is deeper. Okay. Luna, thank you for the super chat. The crumbling top of the castle looked like crumbling Faramazula. Perhaps this is another place outside of time rather than time travel per se. I think Faramazula is just... I don't think it's, like, outside of time. I just think that the Dragon Lord has time powers. Uh, and it's not... It's not even floating or flying it's just stopped in time <laughs> and it's crumbling slowly that's why it's crumbling paramazula so time's not even really stopped there it's just moving very slowly because of the of the lord is sap dropping yes i think the sap is dropping and this tower is collecting what's what remains of it so this tower is collecting what remains of it and this tree is over here gripping and squeezing the sap out of it There is also the conundrum that if this is not the future, what's going on here? How did all these buildings get here smushed together and this building appear here to collect Erd Tree Sep? Because this would have had to have been built. If the Realm of Shadow is a different area, then these might be... Yeah, this could be Mikola's Dream. It could be Mikola's Dream and Alternate Dimension. I think it's more likely this is Alternate Dimension than it is Time Travel. Because this stuff wasn't here before. There's also the fact that the land is kind of smushed together in a way similar to how Dark Souls 3 was. In Dark Souls 3, yeah, it might be a different Earth tree, it might be a different tree. That's also a possibility. But in Dark Souls 3, um, what was happening in Dark Souls 3 is that canonically the land was smushing together to connect everything to um, Lordran. So all of the different lands in the world, the way that the reason that it was all weirdly connected was that, you know, Anor Londo was squishing, every, like all of the lands were squishing together to a single point. Um, and that reminds me a lot of how the architecture here is set up. It looks like a bunch of jutting land masses. Uh, coalesced here. You can see the pink of the Halig tree and the unborn rune shot. Ooh. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. This is probably still the same tree. This here, this is probably still that's yeah, here's the sap. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
in that forsaken place. Reddit, the official site that apparently I can't find this official site that you guys are talking about where America first set foot. Now that is interesting. Look here. This is what happens when I go look for it. Uh, okay. Official website. Nothing here. Nothing here. There's Lauren. It says America went there first. That's interesting, Lauren. It's in the video description. Okay, I'll go here. Here's the website. It's also probably that I tried to go here and uh, the high traffic from people trying to get in here maybe is causing this or my internet's being poor. But that seems unlikely because I'm still streaming. Oh, the description. Okay. A place obscured by the air tree where the goddess America first set foot, a land purged of an unsung battle set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikula departed, divesting himself of his flesh his strength, his lineage of all things going. Okay. Okay. Not Mesmer. He's not Mesmer. 100%. 100%. That explains why he's ghostly and ethereal here in this shot. So he's, did, he's done something that's similar to what Ronnie did. Rani also did this same thing. She divested herself of her flesh, her strength, and her lineage, and all things golden, to be able to pursue her path. So this might, this is probably going to give us access to another ending, a Mikula ending. Where he's able to do something uh, unrelated to the Golden Order. I genuinely think Mesmer is a forgotten brother brother of Mikola, wiped from history due to an association with blasphemy like in Dark Souls 3 with Nameless King in a similar situation. That could be it. That could be that could be the same thing. Cause uh Mikola there's some possibility that that Mikola is, still has an alter ego in Mesmer, but Mikola already has an arc alter ego. Uh Mikola is Saint Trina. So he already has his male female dichotomy that his um his parents had. What if Melania wasn't the real sibling? Melania has to be. Like, Jesus. <laughs> she better have been the real sibling for all the... <laughs> You know what? You know what? This could be... This could... What is happening here? What is the land of... Sh the, sh the land of shadow just has to be an altered dimension. Has to be. Right of the area at the beginning, it looks like Lyurnia. You can see one Malaceles in the right corner, and towards the middle of the right half, you can see one of the four Belfries. You think this is Mana Celeste? Towards the middle of the right half, you can see it's four belfries. Here. Is it this is this is what you're talking about? Hmm. This does look <laughs> this does look like the this does look like the Belfries.
but then that would have to mean that this is the academy. All right. All right. It's time for me to silently contemplate. I'm going to go and going to rewatch this on my own for a while. Start looking at uh, people's posts and ideas. I might have a video on it soon. <laughs> Thanks to you all for coming, fellas. Could Mesra be Mayo Melania? Ah, uh, I doubt. No, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. He has to be his own thing. Till next time, everybody. Goodbye.